anything that the government is doing not explicitly listed in Article 1, Section 8 is, by definition, unconstitutional. And, and all powers uh, that are not listed in the Tenth Amendment, there's only three of them, are reserved to the states or the people. And the Ninth Amendment, as you said, clearly states, you know, every common right of a free creature, we've got it all, and the federal government can't touch it. But now the feds are saying they want to push a one-child policy here because it's not expressly enumerated. And But when it is enumerated, under the First Amendment, how can you have someone who's going to be the Supreme Court justice say, I'm going to arrest you for your speech? What a piece of trash. What a tyrant. What an enemy of anyone that loves freedom. Michael Bagneric, big part of the new film. Don't tread on me. Get it first at Infowars.com. I'm so excited about this film from William Lewis and Gary Franchi. We'll be back on the other side of this quick break with Michael Bad Narek. Today, we've covered so much news. We haven't even taken any calls yet. We will take calls for Michael. Stay with us. Skype's great to have him be a video feed, but it does have some uh, hiccups, but it's getting better and better. Coming up, Texas school demands students submit to intrusive census form. There's no law to do that. All the feds can do uh, to enumerate how many representatives you get for your state is ask you every 10 years, how many people live in this house? That's it. Not, again, there's a bunch of different versions of the forms, at least four different ones. One's only 20-something questions, one's 40-plus. We've gone over the forms here. You can go to the census website and read it. But they ask, do you own guns? What type of toilet do you have? How many homes, uh, I mean, how many rooms in your house? Do you have heating? And they're asking the kids this stuff for CPS and other reasons. This is scary. That's coming up. Going back to Michael Bagneric, uh, Michael, we see the public waking up. You know, when you came forth in the presidential election as a Libertarian Party candidate in 2004, people were starting to wake up, but not like they are now. Are you seeing the same awakening I'm seeing? And, and, and uh, are you concerned about the attempt to demonize uh, any type of Tea Party or Tenth Amendment, Ninth Amendment, states' rights nullification movement? I do see a huge... Uh increase in the number of people who are waking up. Um, a lot of the people that I talk to tell me they've only woken up in the last year or so. So we have the Tea Party, the Campaign for Liberty, the 912 groups. All of these different groups are starting to gather people. And this is an incredibly good thing. Uh, you and I have been telling people about this stuff for years. And for I, for one, feel that they're start, finally starting to listen to us, Alex. That's a good thing. As far as do I worry about the mainstream media demonizing us, no, I really don't worry about it because I know it's not going to stop you and I. But I think that when your ordinary average person goes to a Tea Party rally and they find out on the news that they're a radical extremist, they're racist, they're going to realize that that's not true and it's gonna, they're going to draw the conclusion that most of what the media has been telling us has been a lie for all these years. So it is a little bit irritating, but I think that having the mainstream media badmouth us is really a good thing in the long run. Well, I agree with you. They still think that they have air superiority, basically, and no one can challenge them. But when they lie and distort and twist, they're only losing what little bit of credibility they may have had left, and that's why you see all their numbers plunging. It's not just people converting over to the Internet. That's happening as well. But they've done national studies that the population trust alternative media two to one uh, with the amount of trust they give mainstream media, and mainstream media is now admitting they're getting federal funds for what they call behavior placement or brainwashing. Well, the, this is just the start. This is just the start with the things that you were talking about at the top of the hour. Um, Webster Tarpley is telling us that uh, it's six, to, uh, six months to a year. The number of people who are coming over to Internet media and to support the Constitution and liberty is going to grow exponentially. We are we're beyond the tipping point, and at this point in time, it's a downhill slide, and things are just going to keep on picking up speed. It's going to be interesting 
not everybody's going to be able to hold on to the toboggan, but we are we are pointed in the direction of liberty, and we're starting to increase our speed. There's a host of issues I want to go over with you, but when we come back, I want to get into the census. They're sending out census forms through the schools for kids to fill out with no congressional authority behind it. Uh, briefly, what is the census? In what role is it constitutional? Article 1, Section 3, uh, Section 2, Clause 3, says that our representatives and direct taxes are determined by population. And in that same clause, it explains that the census must happen every 10 years. So the census is mandated by the Constitution. That part is true. But as you said a few moments ago, the only thing, the only thing they can ask is how many people live in your house. Now, frankly, it's in your best interest to answer that part of the census so that we get accurate representation. But as I told a census worker, what difference does it make if the Republicans and Democrats in office, in Congress, are passing the Patriot Act, the Military Commissions Act, the Homegrown Terrorist Act, then they're not really representing us. So, Absolutely. Michael Badnerick is our guest. He's a big part of the new film, Don't Tread on Me, Rise of the Republic. Start shipping out on Monday from Infowars.com. Such a powerful film, covers all of these subjects. Available at Infowars.com. Michael Bagnarek is our guest. Your phone calls and a lot more straight ahead. I'm going to do a YouTube video when I get off air today. You know, we've talked about how the Ford Foundation and the government are trying to fund white supremacists, Mexican supremacist groups, black supremacist groups, so that we don't become Americans and love the Bill of Rights and Constitution and private property and freedom and the Second Amendment. No. So that we all just fight with each other over race. And I'm really concerned about Robert Rodriguez's new film, Machete, because the trailer came out and it looked like race war to me. And the white guys are the bad guys, and Robert De Niro's in it, and Jessica Alba, and all these people I've been fans of, and I've liked Robert Rodriguez, fellow Austinite. Well, I was contacted by members of his crew who are Hispanic who are concerned that it's going to have a backlash against Hispanics. And now I've been sent the script. And here's the script for Machete by Robert Rodriguez, and it's worse than I even thought. So uh, for Raw Story and others that admit they haven't even seen the trailer and are making fun of us, uh, you're not, I guess you'll laugh at this too. The Minutemen are all hacked up and killed with machetes. White people are the bad guys. The only good part about this film is a senator stages a terror attack against himself as a pretext to go after Hispanics. So I guess... Robert Rodriguez has been given my films, I've been told. I guess he woke up to something here. Uh, it's just horrible, and it's just it's just disgusting. Um, now, we're going back to Michael Bagnerick and then your phone calls. But I wanted to go back to Kagan, disappear free speech if the government deems it offensive. Uh, here's another one. Law would empower uh, Hillary to revoke citizenship of whoever she deems terrorist. That, that's citizens. And, and this World War II law was what was used for Italian and Japanese Americans. This is why they grabbed hundreds of thousands of Japanese and put them in forced labor camps. People who had been here for 100 plus years, owned their own seafood companies, their own manufacturing plants, Japanese doctors, total Americans. Well, they're now saying, oh, Adam Gadon is the grandson of one of the ADL board members. Totally staged, folks. They've uploaded videos in the Intel Center's own logo with Al-Qaeda. It's all fake. This guy's an operative to sell us this idea. I want to play this and get Michael Bagnerick's uh, take on that. Then I want to go over this Texas census form uh, and then uh, your phone calls. But uh, here is the CNN propaganda piece where they just report it calmly and nicely like it's going to keep you safe. We have to do this. We have to just get rid of the entire habeas corpus. It's in the uh, Belligerence Act, racing through the Senate, where you just disappear. Bag goes over your head, you're gone. Here it is. California-born Adam Gadon in an Al-Qaeda recruiting video. I will now proceed to destroy my American passport. But the Al-Qaeda operative on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list is still a U.S. citizen. If we captured Gadon today, he could make a claim as an American citizen to be tried in a federal district court with all the rights of citizenship. 
This bipartisan group wants to change that with legislation revoking the citizenship of Americans the State Department deems aligned with foreign terrorist organizations. Now, what it actually does, and we've read the bill on air, we printed it out and showed it to you. You can go read it. In fact, I'll give you the um, headline here from the article that Paul Watson wrote two months ago, we warned you, three months ago, actually. You can go read it uh, for yourself. The Centers to be Detained as Enemy Belligerents, March 8, 2010. I guess it was two months ago. And you can read it subsection by, no, no, no. They're not going to just say you're not a citizen. You're not going to get any due process under any law. Look how they're ordering Hatari released, and the feds have tried to strip them, because it was all made up. They didn't threaten anything. They just said if the, if the government attacks us, we'll have to defend ourselves.